Alrighty guys, what is up? Welcome back to another video. Today, we're gonna be showing you guys how I film my videos. Um, you know, this is a topic that has been asked about a lot in my comments, uh, right up there with like the micro skiffs, kind of walk through what boat it is, whatever. And so it's something that I really wanted to tackle uh, today because it is just crazy weather. I've been fishing a lot lately, haven't really been able to put something together uh, that is worth uploading on the channel. And obviously today, if you, I mean, if you're in South Florida, you know it is a monsoon out there and it's just, I can't even go outside. So I figured today I'm gonna show you guys what I do filming and what I use, what cameras I use, what gear I use and how I do it. So it's also just a, when I first started trying to figure out how to film stuff, there is not a lot of good um, information out there that is helpful. And I had to do it a lot through trial and error. And I think, it's something that I want to help you guys with if this is something you're trying to do, tr trying to film some of your trips and whatever. But that being said, let's hop into it. And as I'm kind of walking through some stuff, I'll throw some stuff up on the screen, some clips of it, just whatever, and it'll all, it'll all make sense. Anyways, let's hop into it and let's start with what's important and that is the power banks. So I don't care what cameras you have, if you can't power them, they're not gonna be useful. So that brings me to this anchor power delivery device. This is my go-to for my back camera, my main camera. Uh, obviously it's pretty heavy, so you can't use it for your chest mount, but this thing, I'll leave the specifics, but it is a Anchor Power Core Plus. And this thing, as you can see here, plug it in, plug it into your GoPro or camera in the back of the boat, and this thing will power it for days. It is awesome, has so much power, and it is very useful for powering my GoPro that I keep in the back of the boat, which we'll get to in the future. The tool I use to power my chest mount is actually a smaller power delivery device. It is called a Veek Tom X, however you say that right there. And this thing is obviously a lot smaller, fits in my hand, and I actually put Velcro on it. As you can see right there, I put Velcro on the back of my chest mount, can stick it right there, can put a cord right on the side there, and it runs straight to my GoPro. And that is crucial because one thing that I'll save you guys the trouble, trying to use GoPro batteries is just not the move. It, you have to replace them. No one wants to replace batteries every hour or two, and it is just very unreliable. You don't want your battery to just die when you're in the middle of fighting a fish and just miss out on capturing that awesome content. So that is what I use to power my GoPros. And now we'll get into the main camera I use, and that is a GoPro Hero 10. So as you can see right here, this is a GoPro Hero 10 uh, with a media mod on it. And this thing is awesome. I mean, I love this camera. This is what I use on my chest mount. It goes right on my chest. And I have this in 1080p, 60 frames per second. What that allows you to do is slow it down 50%. So I rarely do that, but let's say I have a tarpon on or something. And for some reason I wanted to slow down my chest mount. I can slow down the clip of it jumping out of the water to half speed and it makes it pretty cool, I guess. But you don't need to run 4K on your chest mount. Um, that's something I was kind of surprised with when I, that's one inf piece of information that I got from other people on uh, YouTube is you don't need to do 4K for your chest mount. It's pointless, don't do it. It is just gonna eat up so much space, be so much harder trying to get it in your editing software. Another thing about the GoPro that I use is obviously you need it in super view. Super view allows you to get a wide angle uh, it can see a bunch of different stuff and if you use linear or something from the chest It is just gonna be awful footage Super view is what you need to shoot in moving on from the GoPro I want to talk about the GoPro media mod because that is crucial So basically what this media mod does is it gives you first of all a Spot to plug in your portable charger as you can see right there. There is a place to plug in the portable charger and that's my favorite thing about this media mod, makes it super easy. There's a lot of different ways you can get your audio, but audio is the most important thing in making a video. If you don't have good audio, no one's gonna watch it. If it sounds like you're recording on a Pop-Tart. But this allows you to have a mic that is better than the GoPro mic on your chest. And honestly, it is, I'm sure it's not the best way to do it. Maybe in the future I'll upgrade to a mic because you can plug in a mic right here. It also has a microphone spot right there and you can run it up to your chest or to your uh, hoodie or whatever, your, your collar. But for me, I all my audio, which if you go look at, listen to it, I think it's pretty crisp, it's really good. Um, I know there's some other YouTubers, like I, I believe Lawson Lindsay uses audio from the media mod 
and it just makes it so much easier in editing, I think. You don't have to worry about getting audio off of a microphone on your pinned on your collar. It just makes it so much easier to have one less thing go wrong. You know, if, you, if the microphone's unplugged, there's times on my camera, my, my mic becomes unplugged, and it's just like, you're left out to dry. This, as long as your GoPro's on, this is gonna be capturing audio. I have the microphone set to the back. If you have it set to the front, I mean, if you think about it, if it's like this and you're talking, it's not gonna pick it up as well. And trust me, I've made that mistake before. I've had it on my front one video and I spent so much time making the audio sound bearable. The back is super crisp audio and it is 100% worth the 50 bucks or whatever it is for the media mod. Now, talking about that, that is if you were trying to film a video in the simplest of ways, I would 100% start with that GoPro chest mount. You need a chest mount. If you're only gonna have one camera angle, I think that's the most important not only for the audio, but in the ease of use, but also just because people want to see what you're casting at, what you're catching. I have a 256 gigabyte micro SD card in that. That allows for, I think, 18 hours of record time, which is awesome. Um, you do not want to run out of space, and micro SD cards, fortunately, are pretty cheap compared to regular SD cards. Now, moving to the back, we have a GoPro Hero 11, and this has a media mod on it as well. You don't really need the media mod, um, because as long as your microphone on this GoPro is working well, you don't really need that crazy audio from this, but it's nice to have because there's been times where this GoPro dies or something happens and I end up using the audio from this and it's still very usable, even from the back of the boat. But these settings I have a little bit different. I originally, when I first started recording videos, I have a Fujifilm XS10 and I would prop that up on the little tripod I have in, on the back of the boat, but the issues with that was it overheats. I mean, it is a, a lot more complicated of a camera. You're shooting in 4K, it has a lot more capabilities than a GoPro and it's not a action camera. So the issues with that was it would overheat, it would stop recording, it has a 30 minute record time, then you have to click start again, and like there's times I just forget or it would overheat and then I don't have that back camera angle. That's why just recently I upgraded, not up, technically downgraded in quality, but GoPro Hero 11. For the back GoPro, I actually use linear 4K, 30 frames per second linear. And what that allows you to do is it's a regular kind of dimensions and it allows you to look very natural. If you use super view from the back of the boat, yes, you can see more, but in my opinion, it's not worth it. It makes it look very distorted, and I want that kind of normal, kind of movie-like look of like, there's 16, nine dimensions, and Linear does that on the GoPro. It has great quality, obviously not as detailed as my XS10, my main camera, but this thing, as I mentioned earlier, I use with the Anchor Power Delivery Device, plug it in on the back of the boat and this thing will run for hours until it overheats, which doesn't happen unless it's peak summer and you've been recording for hours on end. But this thing has like 10 hours of record time. I have a bigger SD card in this. I have a 512 gigabyte micro SD card just because 4K footage eats up space and I want to never run out of storage. But this thing in the back of the boat does awesome. I have the media mod on the back set the front just because it's aiming from the back of the boat. If this audio on this GoPro ever goes out for some reason, I know I have this as a backup. Um, I just put it on the little GoPro mount as you guys are probably seeing, um, as I'll show you later, but does everything I want. You know, it records the uh, back of the boat. I think I love that footage more than anything, pairing those up, having the ability to have my chest mount, but also I think the camera angle, if you're trying to take the next step from the chest mount, Having this in the back allows you to see like my facial expressions, where I'm looking, what I'm pointing at. It allows you to see so much more. And as you guys can probably see, and it just allows you to see where I'm fishing, what I'm looking at, and it is just a crucial element to step up your video game. And that's something I learned super quick. That's why I added that to the arsenal, you could say, because I needed a more reliable source back there that will record for hours on end. Okay, now moving into something that I would say if you're trying to take the next step besides GoPros is to get a more reliable standard camera. And that is where my Fujifilm XS10 comes in. I actually bought this refurbished off of Fujifilm's website, which cut like five or 600 bucks off the price. But it has a Fujinon aspherical lens, 18 to 55 millimeter. Now that is kind of the stock lens that comes on it but it is a very nice and rather expensive lens that comes with the camera. 
And as of right now, I see no need in spending more money on a camera that might be able to maybe zoom a little more or do some other things. But this camera, I love. If I'm fishing solo, all the intros, all the B-reel shots, all the cinematic, slow motion, cool shots that you guys see, this camera allows me to do that. And I think if you're taking the next step in your videos, you need something like this that can take more cinematic, clear pictures. Do you need a camera this advanced or this expensive? No. There is plenty of cameras out there that can do a great job for cheaper but this is just one that I saw other people use and I saw it had great reviews. It's very durable and I love it, it is awesome. Another thing that I love using this for is when I'm by myself fishing release videos. So I'll like have the camera in the back, I'll catch the fish, whatever. And then a lot of times when I'm fishing by myself, I don't have anyone else to record. I'll grab the camera in one hand, have the fish in the water and release it, have it usually recording in slow-mo and it really allows for some awesome footage of fish. But one thing I love is when I'm fishing with my buddies, whether that's one of my brothers or my buddy Billy or something, as you guys have seen a bunch on this channel, what I typically do is I have it out and ready because now I know I have the chest mount, I know I have that GoPro in the back, but if Billy hooks a fish or I hook a fish, one of us can pick up this camera. I typically leave it in slow-mo, 120 frames per second, and you can record the snook coming up. I mean, there's one, I'll try to include it, there is a clip I'm thinking of on top of my head where Billy hooked a slot over slot snook on a chunk and you know he's fighting it. I know I have the video from the back but I'm recording with this camera and it really allows you to get some very awesome footage. Just recently in the Keys we caught a dolphin. I'll include this right here. You can see the quality of footage is just unreal. It is so so pretty and it really just kind of takes my videos to the next level which I appreciate. Going back to that camera uh, the settings I typically run it in are 4K, 30 frames per second, and it really takes awesome video. If I move it to slow-mo, I put it in 120 frames per second. Uh, that's what all the slow-mo is that you see. On it, for audio, I have a Onheiser MK something. I'll leave a picture of it or a link, but it is a great mic, a couple hundred bucks, and it does a great job. Super crisp audio, can't complain automatically powers on when you turn the camera on, which is huge because I forget everything. I will forget that. But now moving on to the next thing in the arsenal is a DJI Mini 3. Now, as you can see, this drone is super small, super, super compact. Um, deployed, it literally is the size of my palm. And the reason that is so crucial is I originally had a DJI Phantom 3 just from when I was younger. I used to always buy drones. I love that stuff. This thing, the battery of the DJI Phantom 3 weighed more than this whole drone, to put it in perspective. And when you're like me, whether you're on a, a paddleboard or on my micro skiff, you don't want to have to have something that big take up so much space and add more weight to a boat like that. Even if we were fishing in the egret, it takes up a whole hatch, super inconvenient. This thing I have in this GoPro box fits in this, and the remote is also super sleek super slick. It allows me to use it a lot more. It's a lot easier to use something when it's not the size of a brick. But that being said, those, I mean, some of the shots you guys have probably seen, I'll, I was actually in the Keys last week and I'll include some shots of it, but the quality of this, I have it in 4K, 4K 60 frames per second, and it is just an awesome drone, super pretty. Uh, it takes awesome quality. I have a 128 gigabyte micro SD card in it. Um, it does awesome. Okay, so that is gonna wrap it up for all of my camera gear. I got the two GoPros, the drone, and the camera, the Fujifilm X-S10 that's recording right now. That allows me to really get all the footage I could need, whether I'm solo or fishing with someone, and it allows me to get all the footage that I need to make a video. And then the next step is obviously making the video, which is where I'm gonna get into right now with the editing software. Heading to the production, side of it. I use Final Cut Pro to edit. Uh, that is an editing software by Mac and I love it. It is awesome, but you do not need to use that. If you are starting off, I would recommend using iMovie. I used iMovie for the first probably seven or eight videos and it does a great job. It is very similar to Final Cut Pro. It doesn't have a lot of the more advanced features um, and Final Cut Pro is definitely better, but for the price, Final Cut Pro is around 300 bucks. iMovie is free. I was able to get Final Cut Pro free from my brother's wife because she had it, I signed into her account, whatever. But it is definitely a financial thing to buy and it is expensive for not knowing if you really enjoy making these videos or if you wanna keep doing it. 
I would 100% get iMovie and see how you like it first. And then once you start making a couple of videos, you're like, oh, I like it, I need some of the more advanced stuff like stabilization or all the effects and all that stuff, 100% upgrade Final Cut Pro because it is worth it. Heading into something that is very important in my videos is voiceovers. So for the voiceovers, I use a Blue Yeti X and that is this bad boy right here. Um, as you guys can see, it is a microphone and this thing is awesome. Really allows me to do a lot of the voiceovers that I need to do in these videos. And I think it allows me to make some of my videos a little more cinematic, almost like film-like. And it also gives me a little bit more freedom when I'm recording and stuff to maybe if I forget to say something or I can record something kind of knowing that I'm gonna have a voiceover in my back pocket. Like I can have a little bit more freedom with not having to explain everything on the boat, knowing that I can always voice it over and do something like that with clear audio. That being said, you don't need that. That is kind of a luxury I bought just because I wanted to. Um, I use voice memos on my phone for the first couple voiceover opportunities that I had in my videos and it worked fine. I would recommend recording it on your phone and then clicking the like voice enhance option in, in uh, voice memos and it does a pretty good job. Lastly, the last thing I will recommend is 100% having a storage drive. So right here, as you can see, this is a SanDisk one terabyte storage drive. And honestly, you probably want more than this. I had a five terabyte one, a WD five terabyte that was under $100 on Amazon, but it broke after probably 10 videos. I don't know what happened, but this thing is plenty, especially if you're just starting off. But basically what this allows you to do is have your project stored on a portable SD drive. It takes a lot of work off your computer. And also a lot of computers don't have more than a couple hundred gigabytes max. So it's like, you don't wanna have to run into storage issues like I did early on editing. It's a pain in the butt get this, store your projects on this, store your libraries, edit on this, and then if you need to, what I do is I save my video in a, in a folder on my computer and then I just delete it from, I delete the library from this. So basically you can just keep using it, awesome. You can also take it with you on the move. So let's say you're moving or you wanna edit in the keys or edit on a vacation, you can use a laptop, plug this in, and all of your project and library will be on this readily accessible. Okay guys, so, I think that wraps up everything. Uh, one last thing, just maybe some some accessory stuff. 100% recommend a dry box if you have stuff that you don't wanna get wet. I mean, you could use a dry box that's pick apart foam. I got it at Harbor Freight for $20. Uh, don't buy a Pelican box for $100, it's a joke, it's a rip off. Uh, I bought that at Harbor Freight. Uh, I use it for my Fujifilm XS10. I actually can, I throw it in there, a dry box, don't have to worry about it getting wet on the runs, on the skiff, or if it rains, I can throw it in there and it will be all right. Alrighty guys, well that's gonna wrap up the video for today. Um, I think I covered everything from uh, how I film to uh, the stuff I use, all the products I use and all that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed, I hope you guys learned a lot. If you have any questions that I may not have answered, um, just leave them down in the comments below. I'll be sure to answer them. I'll try to provide some links to all the stuff that I put pictures of in the comments if you want to just click the links. And yeah, I hope I help you guys out. I know that's something that I learned in the couple months of doing fishing YouTube videos. I learned a lot of this on my own. Um, there's not a lot of videos out there. I hope this video helps a lot of you guys who are trying to maybe get better at filming or just start filming your videos uh, in the first place. But yeah, you don't need a bunch of gadgets, a bunch of stuff. You can start basic with just one GoPro um, and just work your way up. That's kind of what I did is the more I filmed, I realized I enjoy it a lot. It's awesome, uh, can make some money doing it, whatever. So start getting some more stuff that makes my life a little easier and allows me to make better videos for you guys. But anyways, that being said, I appreciate you guys watching these videos. Uh, I know the last two haven't been fishing. Uh, I mean, it is monsoon out there. You can see out that window right there, but we're gonna be fishing here today or the next day, uh, even in the rain. And we're gonna be back doing fishing videos just like usual as soon as I can. And I appreciate you guys watching these, even though obviously I'd rather be fishing, you'd rather be watching fishing stuff, but I hope this helps out some people who have had some questions about it in the comments in the past. But that being said, I appreciate you guys. I'll see you in the next video when we're on the water and peace out.